see a lot of people posting things when my computer was working this afternoon. It seems that we have a lot of myths about beekeeping. And one of them is about drawing wax. Uh, people claim they can't get wax to draw, uh, especially plastic wax. If you feed the bees and you feed them thick syrup, they're going to draw as long as you're 55 degrees and above. And the second thing people talking about was mean hives. The meaner, the more honey. That is a bunch of crock. The bee's stomach, I don't care if it's an Africanized bee or a European honeybee, that honey stomach is the same size. I would rather have a bee that I can work gently than a bee that's so fierce that you can't even work with two bee suits on. And I think what people are assuming is because they're not working their hive. They're not in it as often. So they have a pile of honey there. If there's no honey flow, I don't care what kind of bee you got, they're not going to get it. And then another thing people's talking about is feeding syrup when there's a honey flow on. They're selling honey. Well, I've talked about that a lot in my videos. You can take a honey bear and squeeze a little line of honey across the entrance. Them bees will walk right straight through that if there's a honey flow. But if they're not, they're going to start picking it up. Uh, robin is another thing that everybody's discussing. We open feed, and it's basically just like humans. If your pantry's full, you're not going to your neighbor and start robbing them because you, you know, you've got the risk of dying. Same thing with these bees. There's a lot of people that's uh, got some weird ideas out here. And that's good reason these uh, chats. Another thing was treating with OA. They're afraid to treat with OA. It's not going to kill you. You probably eat more OA in the food you eat than you're treating your bees with. Uh, wax moth was another thing people think. Uh, personally, I don't save my wax from one year to the other. If you're saving your wax, just take one frame, cut the wax out, and pull that wedge bar out and look underneath it. You're going to see that black peppery stuff. That's your wax moth eggs. And, you know, I think you're just putting that stuff back in a hive to contaminate it. People think, well, I got these drawdown combs. It's that much faster. They're quicker to build out. You take a hive. Put a frame in there of just a starter strip or a frame with nothing between two frames that's drawn out. Go back in five or six days and see where that queen's at. It'll be on that new wax. So I think the queen's trying to tell you a little something right there. Uh, another thing is beetle treatments. Uh, we're doing uh, the diametrous earth and the Crisco, and we're using food coloring so we can tell that it's mixed. Uh, we're putting about a teaspoon to a tablespoon per hive, and we put a dab in each corner and take the spatula and spread it thin. Uh, it seems to be working fairly good. My students have seen it working up here. I try not to put the stuff on the internet until I see that it's doing fairly well. Uh, <clears throat> and if hives, you know, people don't want to get in their hives. There's a big discussion about don't open the hive too much because, you know, you're, you're you're getting the bees upset, you're breaking the seal, and it's, it's on and on. But if you're going to run hives for honey, you're going to have a strong hive. They're borderline on swarming all the time. So I would recommend every 14 days going completely through that hive, all the way down to the bottom board and check for those queen cells. Uh, there was a lady that was posting that she never goes to the bottom because she can't lift these heavy boxes. Well, there's another reason to go to five frame nukes or to even go to mediums. I mean, we have a lot of women out there that can't lift that way. Uh, I have basically a bad back. So what I do is take a lid, put it upside down in the wheelbarrow, put a deep box there and lid over it. And as I work my hives, if I have a frame of honey, it needs to come out. I pull it, set it in there. That way you're not getting no robin. Uh, I hope there's other things that we can talk about tonight. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't get in here early. One of my laptops is over trying to get it fixed. I wish I had somebody close to me that right now, this computer, I can't get Facebook up here on it. Everything's all scrambled up. 
I suppose somebody at work says stuff, looks at it, laughs at me, and pushes two buttons and fixes it. <laughs> I know. He probably pulls his hair out when I call him, sees my uh, caller ID, and he says, I'm out of town. <laughs> but let's get some questions going and, and get the conversation going. I got no hands up right now, but I have a question for you, Don. As far as the starter strip goes, mm -hmm. I know you like to do like a, maybe a two inch strip across mm -hmm. the entire top. Right. Um, I've noticed that they usually build the drone cells on that, off of that once in a while. Uh, well, if you're getting drone cells, you're not either feeding them enough or you don't have enough bees in there. That's, that's one thing. Or you could have too big a box. Now, springtime, I will take a deep and I will cut it in half. And I will put a bobby pin in that middle hole to stabilize it. And then I put feed to them. Jeff's got his hand up. I know he's got a question there. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, hang on, you're still you got unmuted on your side. How's that? Is there yeah, you yep. Coming through good now. Yep, you're good. Okay, I have to second the uh, new wax with Don. Um, the the queens they'll lay so much more on a new wax, and people think even if you have a wax that's one year old, if it's got drone cells or if it's got stretch comb or comb that's misshapen. Um, you're going to lose all your production. Uh, the, your queen, your production is all based on numbers. Um, the more your your brood space has got a, a plentiful a comb for her to lay in, that's what she wants. You know, the small cells, no drones, no mis no stretch comb. It makes a huge difference in production. Oh. I, uh, I bought a couple packages from you, Don. Um, all new comb except for two frames. Um, they ended up being three deeps and a medium. It's a ten frame, both packages. Packages will develop if you feed them. And I didn't feed them tons either. Um, I fed them some in the beginning. I just, I had, didn't have time. You said you don't have enough boxes. I didn't have enough boxes this year. <laughs> it just went crazy. The DR blew up. Uh, it just, I just couldn't keep up with them. I, I put 1,200 frames together, 100 boxes. It was, it was nuts. Uh, they just went crazy. In a week's time, you'll go right through it, won't you? Yep. That just goes to show you that uh, even unsolicited uh, testimonials here, people will tell you, put a package in, you're not going to make no honey the first year, and you're not going to split it. Uh, Wade gets in here. He's the preacher we have in the next county over here, the next town. He bought 30 packages from me, and those packages the first year averaged three to six gallons, and he said he split those hives at least each one three times that first year. So... There's a lot of misinformation out there, and people take that misinformation as gospel. I mean, uh, Dennis will tell you, you know, if you feed the bees, they're going to multiply. I mean, I got students in all parts of the country that, that can tell you that. Same thing. And uh, John Urkel, I sent you some customers. I don't know if they called you. I told them to look for you up there. He called me from Pennsylvania, so I uh, referred him up to you. I hope you can take care of him. Okay. Okay, uh, we have Mark Andrews with a question. Uh, go ahead, Mark. Hey, everybody. Um, hope you can hear me. I don't know if my internet's doing the best tonight. It keeps going in and out. But um, I just want to put a plug in, Don. Um, I've had your bees for two years now. They went through last winter, going through the winter again this winter. They're looking really good. Um, you're talking about making honey on a package. I sent uh, a package up to Michigan or Minnesota to a guy, and he texted me back in the fall. He said he made six pounds of honey off of that package. And so I thought that was pretty good. But um, the bees, I keep them in a separate yard from other stock that I have. The, the bees are just so gentle. It just amazes me. I worked with some other bees this year, and they were Italians mostly, and um, not as gentle. But um, when I go over to that yard, it's just like night and day. Those bees are just as easy going, gentle, easy to work with. I even had a, a bear attack um, in the last week, and I went over there at night. And luckily, it's warm here, so the bees were uh, he had turned the box over. And the frames were on the ground. Um, the bees were clustered up there on the frames. 
and I picked them up. It was in the dark with a flashlight. I picked them up, go down the wood and get the box, come back, pick them up, um, and set them back in the box. And no protection, did not get the first sting. Um, looked back in them a couple of days later, and the queen was in there. And they, they didn't have some brood. So in one of those frames, he evidently didn't get to. Still had a little brood left on it, but um, they look like they're doing well. So I've been feeding money because he took everything else they had. And I had a couple hives like that. I lost about three. But the other ones, just putting them back in and working, even in this weather, it's not that cold here, but they're just as gentle and easy to work with. It just, it just blows you away. So I just want to pull again and let everybody know we're here up in here in central Virginia and uh, we've got that stock of yours and we're just really enjoying them. Well, that's uh, one of the good selling points. You know, I do these videos. Uh, Pat's been here. Her husband's been out here working. When I, and anybody's been in a bee yard and when the beekeeper is shaking packages, then bees get a little mean. Her husband was lucky. He had shorts on that day, and he was standing holding the funnel while I was shaking bees. So uh, one thing I can say, I had a couple calls here just in the last week. People wanting to buy some of my stock because they want to get a diversity in stock. And I say, before you go too far, I said, check some references on people. I said, I have to buy some stock, but I've made mistakes in the past. If you get five people that send you bees from five different places, you might have five different varieties of bees. Maybe three of them you can work, and then a couple of them you're not. So be careful of what stock you get. I mean, price is not the thing. If you got bees for free, you can't work. I would rather pay $10 for the bees and be able to work them, you know, with no clothes at all on, you know, or just a pair of shorts on. I mean, there's no such thing as free stuff out there, you know. There's people that buy bees and never restock or requeen the genetics from the time they bought them. And they might have them 15, 20 years. They get as mean as old snakes. I mean, you've got to keep your stock up. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people will say, well, why you buy bees? Diversity. But I know who not to buy bees from. I mean, there's people that got sales on bees all the time. There's always a reason there's a sale. They either don't have the customer base or they have bees that they can't get rid of. So there's things there to look at out after, you know, not, don't take my word for it. Get on the Facebook, get on the internet, get some references, check on Joe down here or Bob or whatever, whoever's selling bees, see what people think of his bees. I mean, you know, if you can't work them, what good are they? Okay. Over to Patricia. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, uh, well, we're going back to talking about um, things that are mistold. And a lot of times it's not on purpose. It's like the old telephone game you played as a kid where you start at the beginning of the line and you say something a certain way and you see what it is when it gets to the end of the line. Well, it's the same way with beekeeping advice. I tell you specifically to do A, B, and C. So then you tell the guy down the road, well, you just go in there and you do A and B. Well, if you don't follow up with C, you're going to have a problem. And so it's, you have to make sure if you're advising other people, especially that they hear what you're saying. A lot of times they think they understand. So they start nodding their head and going, yeah, yeah. And they get ahead of you and quit listening. And so it's real important to make sure that when you're advising other people that they are hearing what you're saying and repeating it accurately if they're going to quote you on anything. Because uh, I see on Facebook all the time, well, Don says this or Don says that. It may not always be exactly what Don said. <laughs> but the good thing about these videos is you can go back to the chats and look up and see uh, even as a point of reference, if you think, well, I thought Don talked about cutting down frames or boxes, I can go back and look through January and see what we talked about. So they're real helpful um, as far as, you know, following along with helping other people. But there's a huge difference 
and what a backyard beekeeper with two or five hives does compared to a commercial or sideliner beekeeper with 25 to you know, several hundred or a thousand hives. And so the stuff that you tell somebody for just keeping two hives alive it's it's all they want they just want a little bit of honey they don't want it to be too serious so they don't want to worry about making queens they're going to buy some queens in a year or so maybe if the bees are still alive <laughs> most of the time they aren't but um on this facebook and and the chats and all with don you're getting expert information on how to be a successful beekeeper with a large amount of hives moving quickly and how to make money at it. And that is the key with this is after the first year or so, you need to be making money. It's selling honey, selling bees, selling equipment, whatever you can, um, or else it's just money sitting out in the yard. You gotta be real careful about that too. Um, and then I also saw several times in the last month or so about people talking about Don buying bees and so when we're on the facebook pages we can help support make help people understand that don's queens are where the value is he buys bees so he has enough bulk amount of bees to support that queen rearing you're getting that colony with his queen and her genetics are going to carry forward so as long as he's buying quality bees which we know he is because he knows the guys that are selling them that Don's buying bees from all over everywhere. I buy bees from other places too, but my queens, my genetics is what you're looking to get. My bees that I got from Don last year, that's the genetics. That, that comes from the queens, not from the bees that are in the box with her, because the bees that are in the box with her now are going to age out, and that queen is where your value is going to be. Um, and so a lot of the things that you hear and see on Facebook, if you don't quite understand it the first time, don't hesitate to question and say, well, what do you mean? Uh, well, how, what's, what's going on with that right now in the hives or something so that you make sure you understand what's being said. When Don's talking on the chat, if you don't quite understand it the way he said it, ask him again. It's no harm in that. Because sometimes, you know, you get talking and, and my brain thinks faster than my mouth can move, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and so I think that I've already told you something and I keep right on going. So just don't hesitate during the chats even to stop and say, well, hey, wait a minute. What did you mean when you said cut that frame off at the bottom and put a bobby pin? How do you do that? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you understand what's being said is, is the most important thing, I guess. So that's all. All right. Well, uh, Pat just jogged my memory, you know. Uh, sometimes my mind is a little slow, but if you say something, it opens up a file in my head. And she was talking about boxes, cutting them down. Uh, the majority of beekeepers reach over and they pick the box up with their thumb inside the box on the, so the end where the frame rest is. So now you've got the weakest part of the hide you're picking up. So... I don't understand why these people even put handles on their bee boxes because they're putting their finger inside. And then once you snap that piece off, what do you got? Nothing. So I've been cutting boxes down the last two weeks. So we have boxes stacked up out there that that's happened or mishandling and you bust them down. What I found works good. I got a 10 inch table saw and I got a, it's called a hardwood blade. It's got, five or six uh, carbide teeth in it, and it's only seven and a quarter inches in diameter, you stand it up uh, and cut three inches off the bottom, and then you take a, a medium, and then you can take it to a, 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 a deep, you can make it to a medium, and if you bust that frame rest off, you cut that off, and then you cut it at five and one eighth inches, you put a piece of, of a board like a wedge bar, on the inside, and then you can stack your Ross rounds in there because your Ross round frames are a little shorter. It saves you throwing in boxes away. And if you don't want to do that, you can make two cuts, three inch cuts, and now you got a shim board. So you don't waste your wood. I mean, there's a lot of things that you have to recycle. And uh, I was talking to somebody about two weeks ago, and they say, well, these 
feeders that you made, they're great. Why are you using buckets? I said, well, you know, when you have Japanese come to your factory, they pay this guy, they, they hire him just to uh, shave off microseconds of the way you move, handle everything. So what we do in a commercial yard is slowly get everything faster and faster. So it takes a little bit of time to lift the lid up, put a hose in there and feed it. It's a lot faster walking down an aisle and knocking the bucket off the top and just replacing it right then with a full bucket. And then as you walk back, you pick your empty buckets up. So everything in the bee yard, commercial-wise, is to save time. It's like we was talking about mixing sugar. Yeah, you can buy sugar for 12 to 15 cents a pound. How much is your time worth? How much is your time to go get it? We used to buy four to six tons at a time. It's one day to go there. It's six hours there, six hours back if you get loaded. And then it's about four hours mixing up 55 gallons at a time. So we're buying pre-mix now. Costs 24 cents a gallon, but you buy, you know, 2,100 gallons at a time, it's time saving. The time you waste mixing, you could be making money doing something else. So that's just an overview of what we do here. So I hope that puts an idea in your head. Then get some questions going here. Got a bunch waiting for you, Don. Um, Who's waiting? <laughs> I got Eric ready to go. Go yeah. ahead, Eric. Hey, Don. Hey. hey uh, Victor and I are looking at doing a couple little out yards, and uh, we're thinking about putting the Ross rounds mm -hmm. on on those boxes. Uh, we were initially talking about doing some eight frames, and then uh, wanting to know is it. How do the Ross rounds handle it? Can we shake packages off of those or will we be shaking those a little too hard on Ross rounds and don't do that? I would say your Ross rounds for production purposes only. Uh, because, okay. uh, and you actually, a 10 frame making Ross rounds versus an eight frame, the eight frame will do better, but the five frame is the best all around. And a good person would tell you about that is Paul. I mean, I turned him on to that a year or two ago, and he just raves about that. Now, people can't get rid of goldenrod honey. Get that goldenrod honey, put your raw rounds on, and feed it to them on a nuke. Now, you draw out the nuke, you can sell a nuke for 175, and you can, I would put two supers on. So you've got, you've got 10 and 10. So you're getting basically honey that you're selling for a buck. 80 to 210 a pound, you're getting $25 a pound for it. That honey that people say you can't resell. Once it's combed, it's, ca it's capped off, it's comb honey, it's going in for, you know, a better price. I've never had anybody complain about, you know, goldenrod honey in the fall. It's another as far, idea out there. As far as we got, um, we got your hive top feeders and stuff, and you're talking about feeding our own honey back to them so they fill those Ross rounds. Do you do that in the dearth or do you do that during a honey flow or, or, or just kind of when honey if, done? if I get someone to close up and said, I want 500 rounds, I'll start opening up the uh, honey, put it on. I put a pier, I don't cut it one bit because if you're going to sell your honey wholesale, you're looking at around $2 average a pound. So if you can get $25 wholesale and Guy's got the money right there for you, so that's the way to go. Plus, you're building up your, your nuke at the same time. You're getting double the money. But that's okay. the main thing there is don't cut the honey. If you cut the honey with water, you've got to ferment it. Feed it back the All way right. it comes out of the hive. Okay. And I see you do open feeding, too. Uh, so, you know, people put that open feeding down. You can feed on the high plus open feed again. You can really build some numbers fast. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. Well, you're, you're in the black the first year, aren't you? Not uh, yet. We're working yeah. on it. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that they have a lot of misinformation. Now, if you want to make a million, put three in it. I mean, Greg is one. I mean, Probably Dennis is doing it. I got two or three out of Texas is doing it. If you can't get in the black the first year, then you're paying way too much for everything. and You're spending money where you should. We got plenty of bees. We're ready to sell. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question goes over to Brandon. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, Don. Hey. So as you know, oh, 
There we go. So as you know, I've been wanting to be a commercial beekeeper, and uh, I'm planning to sell bees this year. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, what should I be focused on right now and, you know, coming up in the near future? Well, what I would focus on is build numbers. I mean, I can give you some nam names of some students that uh, they bought the bees and wanted to get into selling because their wife kept saying, you're putting all this money and you got to start getting some out. Once you start to sell, then it's hard to stop. Uh, I would get your numbers up and, and get a good supply of sugar. One thing to do is get you a website put up and figure out what you're going to, as far as your name, uh, you can advertise, you got my bees and you, you shouldn't have no problem selling bees. All right. The problem is making them and feeding them. Right. <clears throat> Good. Yeah, I've done most of that. I've got the website, yeah. everything else. You know, just get your sugar lined up. Where are you at? South Carolina? No, uh, Tennessee. Tennessee? Mm -hmm. What? Got you a one-ton truck or a big trailer? No, not yet. Get you a, a way to haul your syrup or sugar. When you yeah. come down, I'll get you a, a contact over there at uh, Imperial Sugar. I've right. got another contact at Domino's over there in uh, North, in Charlotte. Yeah, uh, That's where we get ours. It's a free mix. You don't have to mix it. It's a little more, but you need uh, those big totes. 275, 300 okay. gallon tote. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, over to Raina. Go ahead, Raina. Hey, uh, just a quick question, Don, about, you know, what, what are your thoughts about people treating uh, for mites using a fogger uh, and a grain alcohol solution, or oxalic acid and a grain alcohol solution? Have you tried that or any thoughts? Yeah, on I've that? tried that. I mean, uh, there's a lot of ways to treat bees. Uh, the one with oxalic acid, that's basically 100%. Uh, there's been several people putting videos up with Everclear and oxalic acid. Right. We've done a yard with that. We had an 80% amount of mites in that, that one yard just using it that because we tried that. Uh, if you're going to go with a lot of hives and you don't want to use the one, invest in that ProVap or there's another guy that's got a Johnny Vape. Uh, you can do two hives a minute. That's 100%. Uh, the Everclear and the oxalic acid, that's a hoax. It don't work. Anybody tells you it's, it's working, go look at what they're doing. Okay. See it's believing on that. Got it. Got it. Thank okay. you. Now, the fogger is okay. It's, you know, for a backyard beekeeper that wants to keep the mites uh, manageable with mineral oil. Uh, the Dr. Rodriguez, he had done a lot of research on that. Mineral oil is a slow suffocation of the mites. Very organic. Uh, it ain't going to harm your bees. ain't going to harm your honey. But it's slow. I mean, that, you know, it's a slow kill. Your oxalic acid is much faster. So there's more than one way to treat bees. Got it. So you think the, mo the best way is to go with ProVape? Um... No, it just depends on the person. I mean, I wouldn't tell you to go out and buy a ProVape unless you're running at least 25 hives. Uh, one, you can do probably 50 hives and rotate them out to where you can do that many in two weeks. Right. You know, you've got to look at your time. Your time is worth something. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Raina, for what you're going to spend on the wand, you're better off spending the extra $50 or so for Jono's Easy Vape. Yeah. Um, it, you can easily do one hive or one nuke in about one minute versus the five to 10 minutes it takes for the wand. Okay. Um, I will probably never go back to a wand again now that I have the Jono's Vape. Right. So, yes, I have tried the, the wand this year and it was painfully slow. So that's what I was thinking about maybe upgrading a plus, little bit. Plus then you have to lug, lug around a battery or have something near you to power it. With the Jono's <laughs> it's electric powered. So you just plug it in. You can have a generator. I have a 200 foot extension cord I ran back to my hives. So it's a lot easier. You know, you don't have to haul around a battery and stuff too. Yep. Makes sense. All right. Thank One you. One thing I will comment on the, the hand wands. They're cheap. They do work. They're a hundred percent. If you don't have a lot of hives, the biggest drawback is if you don't pay attention and you got that vaporized ring there, you're going to burn the bottom of your frames. Now, the ProVap or the Johnny Vape over there, you're blowing a vapor in there. You don't discolor the frames. You don't have that problem. So 
there's a little things to think about too. Okay. okay. I, I have a story about that that I'll share some other time with the group. <laughs> okay. okay, sounds good. Looking forward to it. All right, over to Dennis next. Go ahead, Dennis. Hi, can, can you hear me? Yeah, we really. Well, I'm sorry I missed last month or last time. I did. totally forgot about it. Getting old. Uh, for the young man was talking about he'd want to make money. Uh, you can do it. Matter of fact, uh, it's hard not to turn down business, but um, get your boxes ready. I, I took a side job in order to pay for a new pallet. I got 250 of them going to be on the way. So, um, and by the time I split them, Don, like you were suggesting, there's 500 queens if I can get up to that size, which I ought to be able to get that size in June, I hope. so. Well, you know, people want to make money. Don't get me wrong. But here's the problem you have. You're only one person. Unless your wife's out there and you've got a bunch of kids, these orders for five queens here or five nukes is good. That's the best. It's it's a drudgery when the phone rings and somebody says, I bought these from you before, I want a hundred queens. You set the phone back down and the phone rings again, here's another hundred going out. <laughs> well, how many hundreds can you do? Now, my son's doing it full time and he's doing these orders like that and it, it puts a strain on you. Because if you're gonna start putting cells in, he sits there and graphs out a thousand cells a week and that's not even enough. So, <laughs> We're building boxes like crazy. Now, I can't run as much time as I want from this yard and my southern yard. So what I'm running down there is eight frame with a divider in the middle, and I'm running medians. That gives me three times the capacity of a mini nuke. But here at my yard where I teach, I run mini nukes. That way I can throw a cell in there. you got a six and a quarter frame, and you got three to four frames in there. And you can turn those once a week. And, but they got to be fed a lot. So there's the good and the bad about everything there. But if you say you can't sell bees, you're sleeping to one o'clock in the afternoon. If you get up, that phone will stop ringing. That's I know. Uh, reason I don't carry a phone. <laughs> well, I shouldn't. Most aggravating thing there is. But uh, Ernest, I had the same problem you had. I had a stand fall over and drop about six hives. And I said, this is going to hurt. I got Don stock, but I've, you know, you drop one, you can aggravate them. And I went out there and picked every one of them up, put them up on the stand and never had a bit of problem with them. Mm -hmm. uh, even the, how would I put the, the more aggressive ones? Yeah, that'd be the best way to put it. The <laughs> most aggressive ones I've got out of Don stock is if you crack the lid real good, they come up and look at you and go back down. The old hives I used to have would send you to the house. <laughs> And I'm breeding off the ones that sit there and look at you like, oh, who cares? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think you'll enjoy the stock. I didn't know who was bringing that up before, but they will survive. Mm -hmm. I'll be below zero for a week or two and up in the 70s, back and forth. The biggest thing for me is to keep the sugar on them until it gets to spring. But right now, they're holding on good. If they do, I may need help. <laughs> How's the orders coming in? Pretty good now? Uh, I'm really needing a few more package orders to take the trip to your place. Uh, nuke orders and queen orders, I've got a list. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to get a few more orders to make the trip because, like I said, I took another job, yeah. and I really need to have a good excuse to skip a day there. But uh, the way the Kobe business is going, that was just a temporary thing to buy 250 of them, and well, I met that goal. <laughs> that's why, you know, I mentioned Antler Ridge there because, you know, a lot of people say, well, you've got a sawmill and you've got logs all the time. People bring you logs. It's time. I mean, yeah. you can buy a box so cheap it's already done. That box is selling for $175. You know, so it, it doesn't justify standing out there to make, a, say, a $0.10, cents, $0.15 cents when you're losing $10 or $15. Well, I ordered a pallet from, I guess there was 250 of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it costs you a little upfront, but I'm not down in my basement trying to get a 200 hives out of a little spot in the sawdust and yeah. all the mess that I did the year before. Right. But um, it's a growing process. The only thing I would recommend, I haven't been down to Don's what you call for a full training session, but I'll say this, 
um, watches videos over and over and over. Because about the time I figure he had something out, I'd do something wrong. And then I'd go back and I said, I forgot the important thing. But uh, I've had a little bit of experience before I met Don, but uh, listen to what he says and not the hobbyist. They're you not making ask money. Eric and Victor, if they learn anything, I keep them busy walking and working. And that's how we teach your hands on. Well, before you, the summer, here, you learn something. Well, before the summer's over, I'll be back down. And uh, then a few we'll days. just have to, we'll, if I can get away from my bees. <laughs> <laughs> But I appreciate it, Don. But some of them guys, you can do it. Just take your time, learn. And like I said, listen to Don. You'll be all right. Thank you now. Okay. Eric, do you have anything to add to that? I have Don. Don's awesome down there. He just keeps uh, he keeps wowing us. And, and we're like, well, it, it seems that it really does work that way. And he said, all he keeps saying is, I'm just teaching you common sense. So. Well, it is. Yeah. Nope, he's awesome. I strongly suggest uh, getting down there. Okay, and over to Linda next. Go ahead, Linda. Okay, am I am I unmuted? You're good to go. Good. Okay, I wanted to tell you, I the last uh, uh, chat I had told you I'd lost some bees and what I've done since then, mm -hmm. and I'm glad you brought up that John O's Easy Vap because I got mine in the mail week before last I guess it was and I used it on my hive and it worked super it was really easy really quick mm -hmm. and I got in it a couple days later and I was just astounded at the number of dead mites in the bottom of the hive I had a um, screen board on and so I took Pat's advice and took I removed that and put a solid board underneath it and I've got good good amount of bees in there and a good queen and so I went ahead there was honey in there but I I broke it down to one deep instead of the two, like you've suggested. And I went ahead and put sugar in it just, just because I wanted to make sure. But other than that, I really don't know what else to do to them. I, I wrapped the box with styrofoam today just to make anticipate sure you've to got vent holes. Do what? Make sure that you have vent holes. Well, I only did three sides. I left the front completely open. You and need it's got a, a the top. What? You need a vent at the top. Okay. Do you run inner covers? They're screens. Screens? Uh-huh. What I would do, uh, you know what carpet tacks are or upholstery yeah. tacks? Yeah, I, I've put them. You can do that, put one in each corner, and then set the lid on it. It's going to give you enough clearance. Or you can put a nickel under each corner or a penny, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, I like to use the upholstery tacks. It gets it up about, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch. Okay. It gets it enough airflow up. Yeah. And should I worry about vape or doing the oxalic acid again or wait till spring? I would wait 55 degrees and above. You can treat. Uh, okay. Look at the hive. If you're bringing some pollen in, then you know the, the brood is starting to expand out. Really okay. Well. Okay. And I have been watching your videos nearly nonstop. My husband <laughs> thinks I'm having an affair with you. Uh oh. <laughs> But I have had some questions about them too. In one of them, you mentioned that you're not using the fishing line anymore on your frames. You can do it now. It, it reinforces it. Uh -huh. uh, well, I used uh, personally 12, uh, 12 pound. I had students here that had good luck with eight pound. My mm -hmm. eyes is not that good to uh, fish it through there. Um, the main reason we use fishing line is because it supports the frame and when you right. ship, it holds in place better. Yeah. And then if you're not gonna ship it, you can take a steak knife and you can cut through the fishing line where the fish, the, the metal line or the wire, you can't cut through. Right. And it seems if you got vertical uh, cross wires and then horizontal, they're always putting the best cells right over them cell, the wires. So Okay, so you still are. Good. You're still using the fishing line then? Not really, because uh, uh, we haven't done any shipping in about three or four years. Okay. Uh, if you give me where you're living at, I'll tell you where a student is close to you. You can drive right there and pick them up at their place. Uh, it's I'm good for shipping. Right now, we can't make enough for pickups, not alone go okay. to the post office and ship. Okay. 
And if you've um, got overwintered nukes, nukes right now don't undercut people. Right now, nukes should be going to 250 for overwintered nukes. Hmm. Well, one of your videos, you brought up the bee inspectors several times, and I have never had a bee inspector come over around. Am I supposed to contact them? Where do you live? Camdenton, Missouri. I would contact your agriculture uh, uh, department down there and find out if I'm sure they've got inspectors to come over there. If you're going to ship beans interstate, you need an inspector and they'll give you a permit. Some states it's very nominal and some states it's here. It used to be $25. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a lifetime fee and the, the certificates was free and they changed it. Now you got to buy your certificates. I usually buy a pack of, I think, 3,000. But that's only if I want to ship bees that I well, need to worry well, about it? It's for your protection, and if someone comes there and buys a 15, 20 nukes and they take them out of state, uh, it's for them to get them through the state. Okay. Okay. And then states, I, they don't charge to inspect, and some states charge $10. Okay. I just need to find out who that is. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had some questions. You'd mentioned your, your boot camp. Can you talk mm -hmm. about that for a minute? Yeah. Well, I got a place down in uh, it's below Athens, Georgia. Actually, it's in Crawfordville. And I'll have campsites down there, which you can park an RV there. There's running water. You can run an electric line or a power cord. And I just charge a nominal fee for the use of electric. And uh, if you're taking the camp, the boot camp, or up here, it's $500 a year, and you can come anytime you want. I have students that's been here in years past. If they want to come back the following year or two, I don't charge them extra. Mm -hmm. I'll put them to work. Yeah. Uh, same thing down there. You can spend part of your time down there, part of it up here. It's up to you. Uh, down there, you can watch. You can sit next to my son down there when he's grafting. I mean... I have people up here that graph too, and no two people are going to graph the same. Some people graph faster. Uh, I'm for, I do the old style. I like to do the wax cups. My son likes the plastic. Uh, I like to make my own cups, keep everything natural as possible. So there's no wrong way. As long as you're making queens and you're selling them, it's all good. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a specific date set up for that? Uh, best thing to do is email me, and I'll let you know. Uh, right now, the students that's coming up here, we're doing uh, rebuilding the boxes. I'm showing them how to build nukes, uh, five frame mini nukes. Down there, we'll be setting up 500 hives. Uh, we got 100 packages or 150 packages to set nukes up down there. Uh, that'll be the March 6th and 6th through the 8th. So we'll be setting them up. See that location there, we'll be running 500 producing hives down there, nukes mm -hmm. and producing hives. And then we have another location a few miles from there that we shake packages from. Okay. So if you want to learn to shake packages, you can do it here at my house or you can do it down there. Okay. If you well, want to wear a bee suit, I suggest you bring you a bee suit. Oh, I think I will until I build up my confidence with your bees. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have nothing against anybody wearing. If you're going to catch queens, learn to catch them without gloves because you're not going to have good luck catching mm -hmm. queens with gloves on. Okay. Well, I will be sending you an email because I'm interested in that. Okay. Okay. I think that's all. And Dennis, I'm going to be getting with you because I'm interested in some bees from him. Okay. Actually, we'll go over to well, Dennis. Give Dennis a hand. Out. He'll probably let you draft over there too. <laughs> uh, you got a pen handy, Linda? <laughs> Your state bee inspector is by the name of Colin, Okay. Anything else? Right, that's, that um, nothing much. Um, I'm waiting to be inspected in the spring myself. I sold a bunch of bees locally in the state last year. I'm disease free, but I want to get that label just for protection. Uh, so let uh, me 
uh, say one thing about bee inspectors. This is your business, and when the bee inspector comes, if he puts a pair of gloves on, you're not letting him work your hives. Uh, it's very, there's a lot of bee inspectors out there that wear a full suit, and they come in there, and they'll do a lot of killing with your bees. If you see a bee inspector comes here with no gloves on, he reaches for that center hive, stop him right in his tracks. Don't let him start you know, pulling stuff. This is your business. All he is there to do is to check for diseases. That's all he's there to do. Uh, he's not even going to tell you if you got mites. So uh, don't let someone from the state bully you. I've had them come here and they find out real quick they're not going to bully me. Uh, if they want to get testy with you, make them put booties on and a throwaway uh, bee suit. And when you know that, the, that when they figure out you know the law, they ain't going to start messing with you and make sure that they sterilize their hive tool and their smoker because he is the bee inspector. If he inspected someone's bees that had foul brood and you're the next one on the list, guess what? You're going to have some foul brood and you won't know it until about two months later. Yeah, I'll provide all his his tool and his smoker and all that. No, I, I've got too much money, too much time. There you go. I'm not going to. I'm doing fine. We're not required to have it. It's just the fact that uh, I got a lot of folks coming in from Illinois and Kansas now just for that one particular guy that wants to have if problems. If the bee inspector comes, you can ask him, what hive do you want to inspect? What frame do you want me to pull? And then you manipulate your frames because in the past, I have bought breeder queens for $300, $350 and watched the, queen, the bee inspector roll one right out of the center before I could open my mouth. So I'm not afraid to speak up anymore. It's my money, my yard, my business. Hey, one thing about having 200 hives next to your house, no one stops off the highway and just wanders across your place. Well, These bums keep I, right I, I on and walking. The air. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of honey business. I'm not trying to sell honey, but everybody sees all these things and say, oh, you've got to have honey. But well, uh, I, I want to put them all that. around my house. <laughs> huh? I tell them, no, I don't. If I sell honey, I'm going to do it by the bucket. You know? <laughs> I sell $100 a gallon, it's $500 a bucket. It's <laughs> worth that to feed them to the bees. <laughs> but that's all I got, Linda. Uh, holler sometimes. I'm pretty busy, but uh, we can get together. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to put that. Um, there is a big difference between the commercial end and the hobbyist. I jumped up. 200 and some odd hives last year and uh we'll jump up at least 300 this year i'm trying to get up i got a set goal i'm trying to get to and i got two kids that i'm trying to train into it to take it I over remember so. when you asked me if there was enough money in it to go full time <laughs> well my wife said in order to jump this stage i got to get a job so i did <laughs> there was no more household income for the right but hey it pays for itself. It just, you got to be willing to work. Once you get the game out there, you'll have all the biz you can handle. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm almost turning them down because I'm still trying to grow. But well, if you're on, if you're on my keepers page now, you should be getting a lot of referrals. Oh, I'm, I'm getting them. Okay. I'm, so my, my uh, page is constantly aggravating the fire out of me. If anybody's <laughs> listening, that's not on my page there. And if you're, if you paid the $500 and bought the minimal, uh, yep. amount of bees get on that page it's like all the free advertising you can get well i've had quite a few people catch me on that page and call and talk and especially those up north that doesn't want to travel all the way down so we're open for business just get on your list as soon as possible first come first serve yep. <laughs> appreciate it don i'll catch you before the year's out we might okay. take a little vacation and go down there i'll introduce you to the boss Oh. <laughs> but I don't know if you'll get her in the bees. <laughs> well, sometimes they do. They surprise you. She helped one time. We picked up a hive and a snake rode out the back. She dropped the <laughs> hive and ain't been back. <laughs> so we'll see. Thank you, Don. Okay. All right. Over to Pat. Go ahead, Pat. <laughs> I don't blame her. I think I'd run too if a snake fell out. <laughs> well, uh, for Linda, for anybody, really, uh, 
the, the bee inspector is under the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, and every city has an agricultural extension agent. Even New York City has one. So if you call him, he'll know who your state bee inspector is. Dennis gave you the correct information for him, but for anything else, call your state's inspector. Each state's laws are different. And if you have wax comb and you're selling bees, there's different rules about that. So just make sure that you follow the rules because one person calls and complains and you didn't get inspected, that's where your problem is going to come in. So whatever your state's rules are, be sure and follow them. But I'm the same way. I stand right there when the inspector comes. And like Don said, which box do you want to look at? I take the lid off. I pull the frame out and hand it to him. He tell he points at the frame he wants. And I manipulate till I get to it, hand him the frame. He inspects. We put it back in and keep on moving. You don't let them, but they don't know. Some of them don't know. They don't purposely come to you to, to kill your queen or to do something. But um, I had one that had never been in bees in the state, hired him to be the bee inspector. And I was the first place he'd ever been. He'd never opened a box of honeybees before. So you can't know, you can't think they all know what they're doing. Them so videos just be real don't careful. Sting. <laughs> yeah, just be real careful with them. Um, and, and just be nice and friendly and helpful. Now, in Virginia, they do a mite count. They do an alcohol wash. Uh, uh, they do a sampling out of your hives and get uh, 300 bees and do an alcohol wash. And so then afterwards, they send you a certificate so you can ship bees or you can sell them in state. Each state's different as to what they require, but most of them are free. But I have heard that some of the states out west are starting to charge a uh, minimal fee to do inspections. Most of the states don't because they really want to make sure that the disease isn't spread. And so they're, they're more focused on that. Um, and the other thing I wanted to ask Don was, do you prefer that somebody comes to you no bee experience and right. become a bee, a commercial beekeeper, or do you want them to have a year of knowledge? Or I would rather start, you know, with nothing because in the past I have this. Uh, I read this. Daddy always did it this way. Grandma did it this way. So you have to unlearn the bad habits. And even someone who's halfway nice and knows what they're doing, I can. I, I've showed Victor and I've showed Eric how to hold a high tool, how to manipulate mm -hmm. a frame where they, no one's teaching that. Teaching someone right. how to light a smoker and how to smoke bees. I mean, that's just common sense, but it's not. People just don't do it. So yeah, yeah the less that they know, the quicker they can learn because you don't have all that unlearning to do. Yeah. You know. And for Linda, uh, I had my bee suit because I wear my bee suit all the time. I don't want to get stung, but I left it in the car and I told Don, I said, I'm going to trust you. And I'd never had a problem. They didn't even come in my face or anything. And Leon was in shorts and flip flops and they shook packages. So, um, you know, they're, they're not aggressive. They're easy to work, but I did have my bee suit in the car because I was nervous. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay, over to Ernest. Go ahead, Ernest. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Well, I did talk to most of them, Don, while you were getting your uh, computer going. But I wanted <laughs> I'm to make I'm a B-man, not a high-tech guy. Do <laughs> uh, you have TeamViewer on your computer? No. I don't. Yes, yeah, we I talked about it. We can't use it anymore, though. Te oh, TeamViewer, yeah. Team, yeah, team viewer, and that way uh, someone can fix it, uh, you know, from wherever, you know. Not anymore. Not anymore? They've, they've cut down on that severely. I can't even connect it down for 30 seconds now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, they want, pay, pay for it now, huh? Yeah, they want me to, you know, pay like $1,200 a year, so. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. I'm going to be in trouble. To, to set my <laughs> thing up, see. Uh, he set my thing up before, so I had tabs up there. I had AOL, I had uh, Gmail, and I had YouTube, and I had Facebook. And all I had to do was click on those tabs. Now, even Facebook ain't loading right, so I don't have a chat on there. I can't even get on there. It's, it's hard to do anything. The only thing I got working right now is AOL. 
<laughs> so I wish I took my other computer over to a guy. To, he's a technician, but he said he might not be able to fix that one. Uh, it was working fine, and it cut off. And then it worked fine for almost a week, and then it cut off, and it wouldn't start again. So I don't know what it is. He said it could be a, a heat sink in there. It could be a fan. He said it could be just shot. It's only about two years old, I guess, or three years old. And this is my oldest co computer here. This is an older one here. So hopefully this stays on so I can get the other one going. Or someone will feel sorry for me and come up and set my computer up for me. <laughs> Maybe my son can get it fixed up for me. I don't know. The younger generation is smarter. Well, they grew up with it, and we didn't. Yeah. We grew up with a can and string. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I heard you talking about you had the AI queens and uh, – I just purchased one, and uh, when a bee inspector comes, he's not going to be in in my hive. I'll I'll do that one for sure. Yeah, those hives there, you should mark them in a way that you know where you're. You know, if you bought AI queens because you don't want anybody messing with that. Um, yeah, and I'll be uh, selling open mated uh, breeder queens uh, uh, too from that this summer. So if anyone, would you get them from Jason? Uh, yes. Yes, and uh, he just opened up a, a uh, another a site on uh, Facebook. It's a private one for ones that's purchased uh, uh, things off of him. So I guess you'll be part of that too. So I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes so, people uh, let me in a group. Yeah, uh, while you uh, touched you on something right. about AI queens, you know, if you're just getting started selling uh, bees don't run out there and buy a bunch of AI queens. Get you two to three, maybe five years experience, then get some AI queens for breeders. But it's too easy to lose a big investment real quick until you get some experience under here. Yeah, well, I've been working with bees since I was about 12 years old, so uh, off and on. But it'll still make me nervous when I mm -hmm. get it and get it installed until I actually get some brood off of it. Yep. So uh, that's the uh, that's the plan anyway, and then I'm still selling your uh, stock also uh, from uh, ones I got from you, and so I'll be having uh, having queens for sale and nukes for sale this spring. So, uh, but while you were off, uh, I was telling the other people, and I guess that wasn't recorded, but uh, I went out and I was working in my hives today, and uh, I was at 53 degrees. And I walked up to one, and I started to touch it, and it was tilting forward. One of the blocks had uh, soaked down into the dirt, mm -hmm. and it was just ready to tip six six uh, hives over. It was just, just in the uh, teeter point. So I, I stuck a little stick under it real quick, and then I got a cement block and stuck in there, and then I had to get the boss up to help me lift it up and get it back in place. So uh, my wife does help me. Uh, when uh, I need her, she'll come out to the yard. But she said, bees are mine, but <laughs> help when needed. <laughs> the bees are yours, the money's hers. Yeah, yeah. But I got it up in place. I could have tucked the loader, but I thought, if I foul up with that loader, I'll have those, all those hives on the ground. So The only hives I've ever had tip over, I had a long, somebody took some old uh, outside decks down, and all the ribs and stuff was two by eights and two by twelves. I had a couple out there that was 16 foot long, and it was on a slight hill back there by my bee lap. And I guess some deers was rubbing on them and pushed that whole row over. So, but I went out there and set them up. I, I think I only got one or two stings, and it was later in the year. So, I mean, you just take your chances when they tip over. Luckily, I didn't have any queens dead, so you know, that's a good part of it. Well, I have mine tilted so much I didn't uh, pay much attention to it because I have them up uh, about two inches high on the back, you know, for drainage. That's a little too much. What I try to do now, everybody's going to set them up different. I try to get them basically level on the stand, and then I get them a half above leaning forward. And you can either do that by putting a, a three-quarter board under there or if you put a two by two under the back side of your hive, that gives you more than enough fall. It's going to give you an inch and a half to 20 inches fall. So 
That's more that's than enough. I, that's what I do during the summer, but the winter time, uh, if any water gets in there and drips down, I want it to run to the front, not to drip down and run into the bees. So uh, yeah. it can run out the front that way. Yeah. So that's my idea, having it higher uh, rather than uh, lower, but they don't look good. Well, you know, you got to set it to where you feel comfortable. That's the main thing. And they don't fall over on you. Yeah, I had one, uh, you know, we had a blowing rain and uh, and I had all kinds of water in, in it. You know, it wasn't tilted enough and a whole bunch of dead bees. So that, that wasn't good. I thought I won't have that again. Like you said, it's a slight experience over the years that you find out what works and what don't work. Oh, yeah. So that's about all I have, uh, I guess, now. Okay. Over to Hubert. Go ahead, Hubert. Oh, you got to unmute. There you go. Hello, everyone from Eureka hey. Springs, Arkansas. Yeah. It's nice to be a part of the group. Just wanted to introduce myself and thank Don for all the help. I'll tell you what, I went uh, and bought 25 nukes and 75 queens uh, this spring in May. And by July, August, I had 120 plus. I'd have ran out of boxes. Yep. It, so if you're going to get bees and you're going commercial, and you follow <laughs> Don's uh, help, uh, you're going to have more bees and you know what to do with. So build boxes. Thanks, Don. Okay. That's why, you know, I, I said, uh, I was mentioning that to Dennis when he first started. He was telling me how many boxes. I said, I would figure on five to eight boxes for every box you got that you're going to need. And that ain't enough. <laughs> I thought I had enough, but uh, I over underestimated. It goes back to the basic things that I'm preaching here all the time. Basic, basic stuff. Bees do two things. They multiply and they store honey. It's the two basic things they're going to do. If they know, your hive is dying on you. Yeah, so I've been bu busy building boxes the whole year. I'm still building. Uh, it, it's, it's just nonstop, which I enjoy it. I love it. So I'm excited to be part of the group, and I'm very thankful that you uh, are doing what you're doing to help people get started. Appreciate that. Thank you. How many sign or how many boxes you got built, Hubert? Right now, I'm around 250 to 300. I lost count around 200, so I'm just <laughs> keep. I'm just building. <laughs> nice. Are you cutting them from scratch, or did you order them? I'm using Advantech as well as you know some lumber. So I've got a mixture. I'm trying mm -hmm. different things, and working on uh, two frame feeders, uh, different styles, using Don's. Um, and there's others out there on the internet. So it's just a. Uh, uh, experience of learning how to build the boxes correctly uh, and that's that's just been uh, something that I should have started a year earlier <laughs> but it's 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 good all right over to Pat again go ahead Pat oh well I was just gonna tell everybody I'm the beekeeper but one of the first things that I recommend to everybody is to make sure your spouse or significant other knows where the bee box is, what equipment to get, and how to catch a swarm, because there goes your money. And I've got a picture of Leon, who for the first three years would do nothing but lift boxes. We have a mini box truck. He was on a mini box truck with an extension ladder and a pole and a bucket to get my bees out of the tree. <laughs> But bees are generally not aggressive when they're in the swarm stage. And if you can, you know, just show them where the equipment is and show them basically how to catch a swarm, you're going to save yourself a lot of money and a lot of aggravation. And once they get confidence with catching a swarm and they watch the bees march into the box the first time, they're more likely to be willing to help other ways rather than waiting till the snake falls out on them. <laughs> I might would run from that one. That's a little out of my comfort zone too. Um, but, you know, have one set of equipment that they can get to easily. And if they see a swarm that they're confident that they know what to do and it'll, it'll save you some money and some aggravation. That's all. 
Okay. If you've got the extra equipment, you know, one thing to do is either uh, have a box or two with starter strips in it or full sheets of foundation. That helps. Uh, and then, you know, have some honey handy because you might want to put some honey in there to entice them. Or if you've got other hives now you know, and you want to keep the swarm there, just go to another hive, pull a frame of honey out and shake the bees off it and put it in there or a frame of brood. But I prefer the honey personally because usually that'll hold them in there. And for some reason, if they don't stay and you put a, a good frame of honey in there and they get chilled, then you lose that. So if you do lose the honey, it's going to go in your hives, hopefully anyhow. Okay, uh, Dennis, go ahead. Hey, Pat. Uh, you said generally the swarms are calm. You're correct. <laughs> generally. I pulled up at McDonald's and there was about three pounds of bees on a bush there and I, the manager was tickled death for me to get them. I failed to ask how long they'd been there. They'd been there about a week. And like a dummy, I don't wear anything when I mess with a swarm. Very seldom I ever get stung. I knocked that bunch down. There must have been 50 hit my arm. Every one of them lit me up. I got a crowd watching me, so I couldn't frown, fuss, or look like an improfessional beekeeper. If I got them things home, there wasn't a queen in that mess. They had, she had lost them or died along the way, but they ate me alive. So new beekeepers put a veil on anyway. <laughs> you never know which one it's going to be. Good advice. <laughs> All right, if anybody else doesn't have any other questions, uh, Jeff, you get on mute. There hey, you Jeff, go. Trying to remember the temp, when you make your own wax, uh, what you keep your temperature on, on your, um, uh, your tub you put your wax in. For me? Yeah. Uh, you mean when I'm making foundation? Well, foundation, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I run about 178 to 184. Okay. And and I have my water when I dip my sheets in. I usually have that around 98 to 105. You put your hand in there, it feels just nice and warm and works the best. If it gets a little on the cooler side, your sheets are more likely to crack on you. Okay. I got a video on that. If you wanted to make flat sheets without embossing them, you could do it that way, or you can buy an embosser and emboss them. Okay. Any more questions for Don? Going once, going twice. All right. Well, thank you, Don. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, stick around for the after chat if you'd like. I appreciate everybody being patient and waiting on me, and hopefully things will work out. I'll have something working better here next two weeks. Thank you, E. All right. Thanks, Don. Bye.